Okay, folks, welcome back. It's 3.30 p.m. on Wednesday, October 9th, 2019. And this is the economic calendar we have for tomorrow. And I think this is what the market's waiting for for this particular week. Uh, we have big news events for GBP in Euro and dollar tomorrow from London Open into New York Open at 8.30 a.m. Let's go over to our charts all right so this is the dollar index uh we're still stuck in this range and it's a little nerve-wracking i was hoping we'd get some kind of movement um much more meaningful above the high or at least break down and run to a logical level of liquidity we traded back to the order block mean threshold as i outlined on the forum the other night i gave you some charts uh, we traded up into that uh, we're just hanging below it the thing that has me cautious, and I'm not trying to participate with anything, is that this looks like it could go higher for the equal highs. And also, gold looks like it could go higher. So we had, if everybody got closing in uh, gold, recent lows were swept here. Uh, this low here is on the 1st of October, the same time that the dollar was unable to make a higher high and gave up the ghost here. So uh, in answering um, a point of confusion one of the members had in regarding the uh, gold market, and I'm going to be a little bit all over the place today because, uh, and I'll explain to you at the end of the video, but uh, there's really nothing for us to be doing right now. So I want to kind of like pick certain things that I want to talk about and also just kind of like outline why I am sitting on my hands. All right. So one of the things that you want to learn to do very well and understand why you're doing it and not have this sense of um, twiddling your thumbs or wasting your time or fear of missing a move, uh, the, the, the periods in when you want to sit still and do nothing it's really, really hard to learn that lesson. Okay, and that lessons come by way of spending time with someone that knows what they're doing and when not to do something. And we're in that stage right now. Uh, with the exception of Monday's scalp on the euro dollar, uh, I've not seen anything of really in, any interest at all that would be classified as a high probability, low resistance liquidity run with very little risk. N nothing that I saw lured me into wanting to engage, let's put it that way. All right, so looking at this failure to go higher on the dollar index on the October 1st, this was the first, uh, because it failed here and we had the fair value gap, I mentioned that we could probably draw back into that. We did that. All right, so now think, this is the daily chart. So if the daily dollar is likely to pull lower and close up this inefficiency. What does that mean for gold at the same time on the first? If they're inversely correlated, in other words, if dollar goes down, gold tends to go up and vice versa. Okay, well, that means gold will likely go higher. All right, so if, if gold's likely to go higher, does it fit a narrative that would justify that? Well, we saw it recently equal lows taken here and the market has some imbalances in here and in here and it's done so in terms of rebalancing and we came back and rebalanced a fair value gap here and we showed a willing to want to rally this looks as if it wants to go higher and run the high which is against what would otherwise be seen as a rebalance here and poised to go higher so it's conflicting okay um, it looks similar to me what i'm seeing in dollar i'm seeing in gold and if i have that it is a red flag for me i don't care what happens in the marketplace i'm willing to let that go in other words i'm not going to be chomping at the bit to, to get in here and catch the big move if there is one this week um, gold and the dollar should be a mirror image of one another and at this particular moment they look very similar so if 
you're in if your intermarket analysis okay if that has a impact on your analysis where you think that negatively correlated assets i.e. gold and dollar they should be mirroring one another one should go up the other should go down and vice versa if they both hold a present condition that looks similar in terms of directional that's a conflict in analysis or at least that's how I interpret it so does it make it easy for me as a trader to sit down and say okay I can clearly see because I could justify both markets gold and dollar to run these equal highs but like anything else if you torture the numbers they'll submit to anything so because of the glaring obvious similarities between the two I'm electing to wait I want the market to do something and I don't care how long it takes the problem is, is you're paying to be here and your patience is a lot smaller than mine is so you want to see a setup you want to see something pan out you want to see something in the charts that I talked about beforehand and it happens well you're gonna to have to wait the markets aren't going to bend to my will because I'm running a, a service here or I'm educating you I have to wait I have to do just like you would be doing if you've learned how to do this you would be waiting too so it could be very frustrating for someone that's new because you think that everyday trading is how it's done and it's not so the main thing that you're learning here is high probability price action setups we don't want to do the questionable setups I don't waste my time talking about those things and if I don't have a clear directional bias that is one-sided where I say okay this is what I think is going to happen and these are the reasons why to justify it but then if the opposite happens it negates that and therefore I would be wrong but I always tell you the side of the marketplace I'm looking to trade I tell you what would nullify that move or cancel it make me wrong or what I'm specifically looking for and right now I can't tell you that this particular day now what does that mean I want to see what it does tomorrow post ECB okay so we don't usually do a Thursday review and it's right on the heels of Thursday we have our Friday or Saturday weekly uh, weekend review uh, I'm gonna give you something with a little bit more than tonight obviously because there's really nothing I can say for the dollar or gold except for the things I'm gonna refer to in terms of a question I got but right now they both have similar structure that could justify a rally in both and that that keeps you on the sideline okay so one of the questions I get a lot is how do I know when not to do something the, the member asked we hear you say it or when, hear me say it rather and I don't always go into enough detail for some so this is one in particular that has me sidelined so I, I have not wanted to do anything on Tuesday I didn't do anything today and while yes the cable market popped up overnight and euro had a little bit of a run I wasn't I wasn't part of it I, my expectations are very very low leading up to ECB as I mentioned in the charts I posted on the forum I don't know what to expect so we don't want to try to trade ahead of the ECB or any kind of big heavy rate announcement it's easy to manage a position that's already in play but to assume a new position in a condition I have right now I don't have a lot of things in my favor that would justify me saying okay as your mentor I feel that this is a high probability scenario okay it just I don't have that so to spare you all of the wasted time okay I'm just telling you that's the number one reason because gold and dollar look the same to me and they both have equal highs that they could be drawn to and I don't want to trade a market that has that relationship in play gold should be moving lower dollar should be going higher or dollar going lower and gold going higher one of those scenarios have to be very obvious or I'm not trying to trade if it's not like that that means the markets are not symmetrical if they're not symmetrical they're going to be very hard 
to trade. Okay, you're gonna get stopped out more. Uh, you're not gonna have very easy low resistance liquidity runs and you're relying on the market to give you your analysis from one side of the equation versus a full intermarket relationship, intra-market relationship, and a macro view. So all those things together make it very easy to find low resistance, low risk conditions for price action setups. But I don't have that right now, okay? So you're gonna have this a lot you know, over the years with me, there's going to be times where because we do our Wednesday or our weekend review, analysis won't line up because of my timing for doing these videos. It may require us to do a, a post on the forum or maybe in a video that you weren't uh, expected or announced to have that changes you know, throughout the delivery schedule of Wednesday and our weekend. Or like I'm suggesting I'm going to do tomorrow, Thursday, I want to have a little bit more information in a video ahead of Friday and no, normally we wouldn't be trading Fridays all that much but I think whatever happens on Thursday will probably create some kind of a tradable condition on Friday and I'll talk more about that you know post ECB all right so let's go over to gold real quick because I, I mentioned it already um, we had a fair value gap in here we came down rebalanced that looked pretty impressive coming away from that and we have relative equal highs a stop run on the downside here and again, it looks very similar to a uh, dollar. One of the questions I got by one of our members was what the equal highs and equal lows, what's, what is that that I'm looking at? Okay, and, and I kind of like want to bring everyone's attention back to month one content. If we see this run lower here, okay, and we have the next candles high here, there, Okay, when this candle goes above or at this candle's high, that is a entry point, a institutional order flow entry drill. You can sell short there with the expectation that we would run these equal lows. When price trades down into that equal low right here, we're not looking for a small little shallow run to that and then buy. That's not what we're looking for. The low resistance liquidity run is selling above equal lows with the expectation that we're going to reach below N10, 20, 30, you know, even 40 if it's a big figure in factor in that area. That's what we're looking for. So one of the members, I believe, looked at it like classic support and resistance where we see this and we trade down into it and expect it to go higher as a result of that. We're looking for the market to run below equal lows, okay, or run above equal highs, okay. We're not looking for it to hit here and go just at it or just below a little bit. We want to see it run through it. That's the factor of low resistance liquidity run. The liquidity rests below the equal lows, not at the equal lows. It's below the equal lows. So what we're looking for is a, a, a shorting scenario where we can short above equal highs in a logical level, okay, fair value gap, institutional order flow, entry drill, uh, bearish order block breaker, anything that you would use as a premium array, you wanna be selling high and expect that run below equal lows. Now we were expecting this fair value gap down here that didn't get filled and it changed when October 1st had the dollar fail to make that higher high here, okay? So all this lower movement on dollar that we were expecting trading back into this fair value gap is a mirror image of what we see here of bullish gold. Okay, now this is a 12 hour chart and I have it up here just to show a little bit more clarity, but just for continuity, you can see here it says equal lows on a daily. We went below it, didn't get the fair value gap, but then we had this move here in concert with the weakness on the dollar. So, if we go into a 15 minute time frame, all right, and zoom out a little bit. If we look at this area right in here, now here's that October 1st. Remember what it is outlined? Let me put the daily dividers on just for a moment. Here's October 1st. 
The market trades up, comes back down, rebalances, fair value gap, market structure shift here. Why is this a market structure shift? Because the dollar failed to go higher, it re rejected, okay, and it comes back down and hits it. And now when the market starts to rally really, really hard like this, it's approaching these equal highs. If we trade just to those equal highs and you try to sell short there, you're asking to get burned because look to the left of those equal highs. You have all of the imbalance here. You have a fair value gap here. Bearish order block in here. And just the fact that we trade at the equal highs is not enough. At the same time, the macro higher time frame is suggesting that the dollar's likely to go lower and gold could go higher. So now we switch our expectation to not just simply looking for lower prices. Now we're looking for prices to justify going higher by breaking areas of which would be a premium array. If it fills this in and keeps going higher, if it fills this in and keeps going higher, if it goes above the uh, bearish order block, which it does, is that bearish? No, it's actually bullish. So the market comes back down into another fair value gap. The low on this candle here, 1474 and 99. So we'll just basically call it 1475. If it trades to that price level, you could be a buyer. The low comes in at 1474 and 0.38. At this lower, lower, you can be a buyer and it does it. And then rallies higher. Market maker, buy model. Consolidation, leads consolidation, trade back to the consolidation distribution. Redistribution, smart money reversal, low risk buy, reaccumulation of longs, reaccumulation of longs, and it pops up. So we don't just simply look at equal highs and say, okay, that's a resistance level, I'm gonna sell short there. The low resistance liquidity run, the way you would interpret that and use it based on month one content, is buying down here in the fair value gap in the order block, buying that with the expectation of running through these equal highs and above it which is what we saw here. So buying here and selling above these equal highs, some range above it, this SIBI getting filled in would be a nice one here. And that would be a good area to, to, to get out there. Buying here, selling here. That's a low resistance liquidity run on the long side, trading with the higher time frame premise. Okay, so hopefully uh, the member got something from that and any confusion they had about this has been rectified. If not, just send me another email and I'll do my best to try to sort that out for you. All right, so let's go over to the euro dollar. Okay, so euro dollar is really sleeping. Uh, it's really, <laughs> it's not really wanting to do much at all. It's, we've been stuck in this range here for about uh, 45 pips or so, less than about 50 pips. We've maintained this range, have not moved outside of it. And it's rather boring, actually. So if we look at a hourly chart, okay, here's what we got. We have a small little imbalance in here that rests just below this swing low. I would have rather seen this come down and hit this low, run through it, rebounce to this price point here, hit the bullish order block, which is these three down close candles. And then being up here, I would feel really confident that we would go higher. The fact that we didn't do that and we still stayed inside this range, it's, just, you know, I don't know. I'd like to see it trade higher and reach into these equal highs here. Okay. And I'd like to see it trade into the equal highs a little bit further back over here too. But we're just in a long consolidation. If we take out this candle is low, 109.22, and what's we'll called uh, 20. If we trade below 109.20, now why that? Well, if we go below this area right in here, look what's over here. We had a fair value gap, price traded down through it, then came back up on the other side of it, and then came back down to it again. So inside this area, we have traded multiple times so this is a balanced price range. So if we go below this again, then euro dollars bearish, okay? And anything up here will just have to be re revisited, maybe over here too. Uh, both of those I've been looking at and you guys know about it. I think that there's liquidity up there. I, I would, if I was making the market for euro, I would punch it up there. I would do it tomorrow on ECB.
Now, whether we stay there after running here or here, who cares? I'm just looking forward to get there because if we get here or here, it'll create momentum. It'll create sentiment. It'll upset the sleepiness that the market has right now. Okay. So on a smaller time frame, 15 minutes, let's go over to that. We have a smaller one bounce, which you'll see on a five minute chart. I think that's what we'll probably uh, run down into and we'll see what we get after that. I don't think that there is a lot to trade off of right now unless we run into the level I mentioned down there um, on the one hour chart. If I drop into a five minute chart, you'll see that fair value got really clear in here. Single candle here and it would also trade us back into this old high essentially. So we could see it drop down in here. That to me, I'd like to see a reaction. Um, it may not be a meaningful reaction, you know, like 50, 60, 80 pips, but I like to see it trade to that level and see the reaction. And I think that's the draw right now on the downside. And anything less than that would take us to the hourly chart and the analysis I gave you there on 10920. All right. Cable. Um, we had a run back up into, well, we got to a daily chart. It'd be more clear. I gave you guys this chart the other night on the forum and I mentioned that we would probably see a meaningful tradable bounce. Now, what does that mean? 10, 15 pips or more, um, something that you can get a reaction off of, bullish order block. So if we trade down to that, I'd like to see some kind of a, a bounce. Now, I'm not saying that that's the low and we're gonna you know, scream for the stars. I'm not saying that at all. Just that's all I have to work with right now. And this level here, we traded back up into the down close candle yesterday. We had all this downside delivery. We opened, traded up, rebalanced all that, and gave it all back just about. And we'll see if we uh, close lower today. It's still an hour or so before it really would uh, roll over and have uh, new trading in Wellington. But if we trade down below that, that would be a level I'd like to see. All right. So we had this rebounce here and we moved lower. We're looking for this specific range and I'd like the open on the candle. So it's 2157, 2160, 2158, either one of those levels. If we can get that um, on a lower time frame with something else supporting it, like a fair value gap or a break or a bullish order block, something like that. Um, five minute chart. That would be enough for me to trade off of if, if it was the right time of day, kill zone wise. And I would exercise that. But anything else, you know, I'm still waiting based on the things I mentioned for the dollar relative to the gold market. So those two things have to get in sync with one another and they have to be the opposite direction. And then everything else will be easier for me. Until then, I'm going to be sitting on my hands. All right, so let's drop back down into an hourly chart. All right, and I got to go back to Euro dollar to answer a question, and then we're done after talking about this one. So we have uh, that in, imbalance from the daily chart. That's what this line is here. Go back and look at two days ago. Two days ago is low, okay, daily low. That's all of this run back up here. Overnight, we popped up to it, and then we gave it all back, and now we're just sitting in here. So it looks really heavy and dropping down into that. Uh, bullish order block on the daily. Do we go lower than that? I don't know. Uh, I, I just simply don't know. I don't know. I didn't catch any of this here. I was sleeping. I wasn't concerned about it. And right now looking at it, I still wouldn't touch it. I would expect it to trade down here, but would I trade it anywhere in here to get down there? No, it's not worth it. It's, it's not anything in here that I would trust to go short because Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm learning this whole impact on your currency over there in the UK. And just as well as you are, I'm sure some of you in this group would say, well, it, it's going to do this for the currency. That's what you believe. And uh, the other half would say something else. And we don't know. None of us know what, it, what it's going to do. So, I'm learning. Okay. So, <laughs> I wish they would get it all sorted out so we can get back to the normal, um, you know, normal trading with with this particular uh, currency, but you know, it is what it is. 
So there's really not much I can give you for that, except for I do think that we're going to draw down here. If we go there and bounce, fine. If we don't, we slice right through it. You know, if it's a time during London or if it happens in New York, I'm going to try my best to do it. And if it rolls through, um, you can assume that, you know, I probably got it wrong. And if I do something, I get it wrong. I'll show it. I'll share it to you. Okay. But I haven't really done anything the rest of this week since Monday's Euro trade, which will be the last thing I talk about here. Uh, let's scrub back to the seventh in here. Uh, I think I already got it on this chart here set up. Yeah, I got it here. All right, so here's the business. Here's Monday's trading. And uh, the member asked, they understood the lower time frame trading into the equal highs, which is over here. Okay, here and here. What's resting above that? Buy side liquidity. So I used this retracement in here. You saw me do that live in the recording that I gave you on Monday. We were using the euro dollar as our case study. And I went long in here on um, trading with a fair value gap. And then the uh, the deeper filling on the um, euro drop, drop down lower. And as it went down in here, I went long again. So this rally up, this is where I took the partials. You watched me do that. And then I left the remaining portion on with a stop that was raised up to, uh, well, you can see where my stop was right here, 81. They both were stopped out, which is what you see here. These are the partials, okay? So entry, entry. This was the five lot. This was the one lot because I gave another additional entry. And then this is me scaling out of both. First one was two and a half on the five lot. And this was 50 minis on the single lot that I went long on respectively. And then the stop loss was tagged on that. Okay. So we didn't get a meaningful run above into that 110 on this uh, particular run here. We only went right up to 110. So the high exactly 110. And then went lower and attacked the liquidity resting here here which took a little while had a little bit of a run back up into here and then sank it lower now the question the member had was they understood on a lower time frame how this is a low resistance liquidity run and was aiming for the equal highs and i'm using the 10 to 15 pips sometimes 20 pips before the actual area i'm taking my first partial they got that much but they didn't understand what i meant when i said at going at to a daily how that was trading in sync on this day with the higher time frame because I was looking for this equal high back here too that was a larger longer term draw which we'll again look at again on a, a one hour chart but look what happened here we had equal lows we swept through that price traded back above it did this down close candle offer support? It did here. Okay. Price is consolidating here just below these equal highs. And this flat area we look, we'll look at on an hourly chart. Okay. So run that 1030 level. This is how I was viewing it and interpreting it as trading in sync with the higher time frame. I viewed these equal lows being tagged and the fact that we found this down close candle, which is a bullish order block, it supported price here. So in my mind, I was trading in line with institutional order flow on the daily chart, which allowed me to take that intraday chart on a five minute basis and trust it for a trade on Euro. And let me zoom out, taking us back to Monday. In here, trading with the expansion idea on the upside and using the higher time frame. It allowed me to trust this as a buy and reaching up into this area for liquidity. Now, I didn't get the run that I wanted. Like I, I had a 110 limit on, I think it was the one lot. And I opened it up to, you can see the take profit, I opened it up to 110.10. So I was not able to get that five mini off there because I wanted to get a deeper run above, which never happened, okay? So, but it will allow me an opportunity to exercise and share with you how it's done and how I frame it. And using the hourly chart, you can see all of that in, in the grand scheme of things. Buying in here, 
with the expectation of these equal highs being taken, then these equal highs are taken, and these equal highs here. That's what I had in mind when I was trading here. Okay, so even though I was technically, if you look at it, I'm, I was wrong. There's no doubt about it. I was wrong. But being wrong, I was able to take something out of it, which is how I teach it to you. So you're, you're going you're gonna to see times where I may interpret price action a specific way, and I may get something out of it, and then it goes the other way. And part of the group here will say, well, you're, you got it wrong, and you should have known better. And the other group will say, that's good. You were able to take something out of the marketplace, and even though you weren't right, you had a positive return for the engagement. So I'm never going to satisfy everyone because you're all going to have your personal interpretations of what it should have been done like, okay, because you're going to look at it from hindsight. I'm doing it live, so I'm basing everything that I'm doing with the content that I'm giving you as the educational material. So hopefully you're, you're, hopefully you're finding value in it, okay, because you're not going to find all the answers, especially if you're new. You're not going to see all the things that led to me doing that trade unless I tell you. And I was trying to do that during the recording on Monday. And still, even that, it creates, um, well, the member said doubts. And I think because they're not American, they say doubts when they say you have a point of confusion, not a doubt. Because when I see someone say, I have a doubt, <laughs> okay, it means that what I'm saying I did, okay, or what were the reasons why I did something, I'm not being truthful. That's, that's how I interpret it. But I think when folks that are outside the United States and they say, I have a doubt, as a young man that's uh, in our group too, uh, Mark, you know who you are. <laughs> you sometimes use that term, I have a doubt, and it's the first thing pops in my head that it, this is someone that is suggesting that I'm not being honest about something. And it's, I think it's a matter of communication as a barrier between my delivery of what I'm trying to say and articulate it and the bridging of your common tongue, where, what, you, what your language is. And I try to do my best to do it in, in a way where I can speak in the simplest of terms. And I know some of you, you know, struggle because you're not English speaking. It's not your, your first language. And I can butcher the English language very easily. So <laughs> I, uh, I apologize for it as much as I can try to make an effort not to do it. Um, when I try to explain something, I'm doing the best I possibly can to do it. And when I said I was trading in the higher time frame bias, I was using it on that context as I just mentioned here with the expectation we could still draw here and here and for real it could still do it I mean it could do it tomorrow on ECB's you know news or whatever or it may roll into it on Friday or it may not do it at all for several months and we go lower okay but these levels here are too clean they're way too clean and ECB could just simply pump it up here to 110.30 and then continue lower and the dollar can go higher and then gold could fall out of bed as a result. That's a, that's a condition that could happen. But I don't see it in the chart to do anything with it transactionally right now. Okay. So I have jawboned enough and I wanted to give you something, you know, for your time today because I'm, I'm expected to give you a, a video on Wednesday. But because I don't have enough insight yet because ECB is looming tomorrow. Um, once we get past that, I'll give you guys a video tomorrow evening. Hopefully we'll have much more meaningful uh, data to work with and what has transpired in the charts. And then we'll have something maybe to uh, go into and practice with Friday. So until I talk to you then, I wish you good luck and good trading.